When it comes down to cardiovascular research, it's always so exciting to find different approaches. Now, vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, has a potential to possibly change how we manage cholesterol and arterial plaque. Now, before we get into this detailed info, a quick recap, what is HDL cholesterol? Often, it's called good cholesterol. HDL plays a crucial role in our cardiovascular health. Its main job to act like a cleanup crew in our bloodstream, collecting excess cholesterol from our tissues and arteries and transporting it back to the liver for disposal. Now, this process known as reverse cholesterol transport is key in preventing the buildup of arterial plaque that could possibly lead to heart disease. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Recent research suggests that high doses of vitamin B1 might supercharge HDL ability to remove plaque from our artery walls. How? By enhancing HDL capacity to exchange molecules with other lipoproteins and cells. So think of it as upgrading HDL from a compact car to a dump truck, more efficient at cleaning out the arterial junk. So let's break down some of the key studies. I've compiled more than 10 studies in regards to cardiovascular disease and B1 effect, but I'll focus on the top three. See, a 2006 study published in Diabetes Care found that benfotamine, it's a fat-soluble form of vitamin B1, improved endothelial function in smokers. Dose intake was 1,050 milligrams per day for three days. That's a very fast turnaround in blood vessel flexibility. Another study in 2012 in clinical research in cardiology, thiamine intake to heart failure patients at 300 milligrams daily for 28 days showed improved left ventricle ejection fraction. And last study, a 2009 study, shown that benfotamine counteracts glucose toxicity, therefore improving endothelial progenitor cells, short for EPCs, as they are the main repair crew for atherosclerosis prevention. These studies, among others, point to vitamin B1 potential in improving various aspects of cardiovascular health from endothelial function to lipid metabolism. So how does vitamin B1 work its magic? Well, while we're still unveiling the full picture, researchers believe it might alter the structure of function of HDL particles, making them more effective at cholesterol efflux. Two, influence enzymes involved in HDL metabolism like CETP or LCAT. And three, reduce oxidative stress and inflammation in blood vessels. So these mechanisms could collectively enhance HDL plaque removing abilities and improve overall cardiovascular health. If further research confirms these findings, we could be looking at a new strategy for enhancing our body's natural plaque removal processes. This could be particularly beneficial for people with atherosclerosis or those at high risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, before you rush to the supplement aisle, there are a few important points to consider. The optimal dose for these cardiovascular benefits isn't yet established. The studies we've discussed use doses significantly higher than typical dietary intake. Now, many of these studies used benfotamine, a specific form of vitamin B1, rather than your standard thiamine. And high doses of, of any vitamin can actually have unexpected effects and should only be taken under supervision. Definitely more research is needed to fully understand the long-term effects and safety of high doses of vitamin B1 supplementation. But if you are looking for a food item with highest levels of vitamin B1, then consider adding uh, pork chop, tuna, macadamia nuts, beef liver, eggs, yogurt to your diet. But keep in mind, the levels are roughly under a single milligram. Therefore, you will never be able to hit the doses required to reach your cardiovascular system. If you are thinking of supplementing, ideal dose for benfotamine is about 250 milligrams per capsule, could be consumed three times a day, 
or thiamine with a reach up to 1500 milligrams per day. Now these tests were conducted personally and have shown no side effects, but not enough time to find out if scores could change in percentage when we're talking about CAC scores. Therefore, I cannot confirm if it's working correctly or not, as for side effects, I did not experience any, but you could experience uh, stomach upset, itching, hives, headaches, and possibly depletion of vitamin B12. So while the potential of high dose vitamin B1 in cardiovascular health is exciting, it's important to approach this information with cautious optimisms. Uh, we need more rigorous clinical trials to fully validate these findings, determine optimal dosing, and assess long-term safety and efficacy. In the meantime, maintaining a heart healthy lifestyle through diet, exercise, and grounding remains crucial. If you're interested in exploring B1 supplementation, please list the dose intake in the comments below. Therefore, we can share as a community. And as we continue to unveil the mysteries of cardiovascular health, who knows what other surprises our vitamins might have in store for us. Stay tuned, stay healthy, and keep the heart pumping strong. Again, thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the cutting edge of cardiovascular research. If you found this information valuable, please like, share, donate, and subscribe for more health insights. Until next time, take care of the heart. Cheers.